Hey there, Steve here. Hope you're doing well. Uh, today I'll be telling you my top 10 math rock records of the decade. So I'm going to choose one record for each year. Well, I have done already, sorry, I should say. And uh, it was fun going back and delving back into the past and having a look what I've listened to for the past 10 years. Um, I'm sure you can do the same and have a bit of fun, see what you can dig up. So please leave your top 10 uh, down below. I'd like to see the records that I possibly overlooked, but obviously these are records that I listen to quite a lot, hence why they are my favourite. I've made a Spotify playlist of the 10 records, but it's not actually all of the songs, it's actually my favourite song that I'm going to choose uh, from each of the records, so I've put that there so you can just go and get a taster of each one if you wanted to. So, let's get into it, let's delve all the way back to 2010, I was still living in England at that time, and I was listening to music mostly on a portable MP3 player, I believe I had a Sony one that had a, that awesome bass boost feature on it. So back in 2010, um, I was listening to the band Maps and Atlases quite a lot. Uh, the EP they released called You and Me and the Mountain. I was a big fan of this. And in 2010, they released a Perch Patchwork, which has some beautiful artwork on that one. And if you've not heard of Maps and Atlases before, they are a four piece and they were playing like indie math kind of poppy music. And then this record took a, a different direction. It became what, what I sum up as um, if uh, Beatles meets math rock, and that might be an overstatement, but it's definitely got elements of math rock on this. It's a very poppy record, and intricate guitar parts and such and finger tapping were ditched for more uh, textual kind of things and uh, different like experimenting with different instrumentation. Nevertheless, there's a lot of mathy influences obviously uh, coming through on this record. Uh, my favourite track from this record, if I had to choose one, would be the song Perch Patchwork, which, the, which is the last track on the record, and it's a beautiful composition. So, on to 2011, we have the EP Apples, and this is by the band Tangled Hair. I'm a huge colour fan, which was the previous acts before what became Tangled Hair, but with um, a slightly different lineup. Uh, I used to go and watch a lot of their shows, so I was really happy to hear when they were going to continue. In 2010, I believe they released the first EP, which is also great, and then they released Apples in 2011. Uh, it's full of wicked ideas, with some lovely grooves, and some really good songwriting. And one of my favourite things is the use of dynamics on this record, which is something that many of us and many bands overlook, is how much of a powerful tool that can be. I've always really enjoyed the way that uh, Alan approaches guitar, and um, James Trude is one of my all-time favourite drummers, so uh, please go and check out this uh, EP if you haven't already. It's got a very live feel to it but it's um definitely you know i've listened to it so many times but i still enjoy it and my favorite song probably if i had to choose one would be the song campfires because it's just got some lovely uh you know, heart in your chest sing-along moments there, so uh, go and check that one out. So, uh, over to 2012, um, I couldn't really find much that was released this year, so uh, what I did find that I remember I was listening to was, um, I just got into Toe really at this time, and I f was looking at EPs they released and their records and stuff, and they had their Future Is Now EP which was released in 2012. I probably didn't listen to it that year, so probably next year or a couple of years later, but um, yeah, because I like Toe, uh, I'm going to choose this one. Uh, Invalids also released a record, but I wasn't aware of who they were at that time, and I don't particularly, I'm not really a great fan of their music, so I'm going to go with Toe on this one. If you've not heard of Toe before, I recommend checking out For Long Tomorrow record instead. I believe you'll get a better introduction to Toe that way. So, on to 2013. Uh, this was my second year in Korea, and I've just got into the band Enemies after listening to um, We've Been Talking, their first album, and they released this year, in that year, sorry, um, Embark Embrace. It was their second full release. And uh, if you've not heard of Enemies before, they are a four-piece band from Ireland. They have this kind of mafi Maffy mix with post rocks. It's a very interesting style. There's lots of rhythmic interplay between this tight knit of musicians, and um, they split up, I think, two years back, but they've got some really excellent music. So if you do enjoy this record, then I highly really recommend you check out all of their other stuff too. Anyway, this album, Embark and Brace, it was one of those ones where you put it on in the background and you just listen to it, and you don't find yourself reaching for, you know, the skip button for that one track that you don't particularly like, and it just the, the whole thing flows nicely together as a one piece. My favourite track from this record, again if I had to pick one, would be Indian Summer, and please go and check out the music video for that. So, on to 2014, um, this is where I was discovering more emo and math kind of acts, um, and I discovered Tiny Moving Parts, and the record was uh, Pleasant 
Living, that I think I started listening to this a year later, if I'm honest, but I'm just going to choose it because that's probably the best record of that year. Um, it took me anyway. Uh, so if you've not heard of Tiny Moving Parts, uh, what rock are you living under? But they're a three-piece uh, emo math band from uh, Minnesota. And the first track I heard from this record was Always Focused, and that's a hugely famous song of theirs, and because of that, the intro, that guitar riff, right? And it's just, just a, a nice song in general. So when I heard that, that was right on my street, so that's why I instantly fell in love with this record. There's some great interplay with the vocals on this record, and I'm a big fan of Dylan Mathiasson's approach to guitar. You know, he'll keep things busy where it needs to be busy, but then he'll just bring things back, you know, for the vocals and singing, and he'll just play the part that the song needs, uh, not going over the top, which many of us can be guilty of, the whole thing where we think complexity equals more engagement. You know, it's hard, it's easy, sorry, it's easy to fall into that trap, right? And um, my favorite track is obviously Always Focused. All right, on to 2015. Uh, this this was a great year for me uh, for albums and this is because I discovered uh, Twin Galaxies by Delta Sleep and I think I discovered this because we played with my band Mountains we'd released a record that year I'm not sure which one it was maybe it was our debut one Tenses or uh, Out of Sight Out of Mind anyway we we went and played a little mini tour in Japan that year and uh, we come back with a few CDs and Ali got Delta Sleep uh, Twin Galaxies from someone, I can't remember, sorry, and he gifted that to me and then uh, I put it on, I had a CD drive at the time so I ripped it onto my computer and then yeah that's all I listened to and then later on I got a streaming service so I just started listening to it on that that same year. So this record is is really catchy which is an odd word to use with math rock and um, I found myself, you know, when I was, at the time I was taking public transport to and from work, you know, I got my phone out and I was like, what should I listen to? And it was, someone was in the back of my mind like, Twin Galaxies, um, every single time. So just good jams. And by the time I got to work, I was about halfway through, so I'd listen to the other half on the way back. So uh, this one is, yes, yeah, a mixed bag, you know, tight riffs, some really fierce moments on it, right? And just that great use of dynamics, again, like I mentioned with, Tangled Hair and some of the songs. Some very interesting like uh, chord choices and you know the rhythmic interplay between the two guitars and stuff. They all complement each other very well. So um, if you haven't checked out this record, what are you doing, you silly goose? Uh, go and check it out. Uh, my favorite tracks, if I had to pick some from this, would be uh, Lake Sprinkle Sprinkle or Spy Dolphin and Strong Funny. Check out the live session as well. Uh, built time productions for Strong Funny. Strong Funny? Strong Funny? Yeah, that song. Really good. Okay, uh, on to 2016. There was a lot of good records released this year. Uh, you know, you can just check out the uh, 2016 in review by Fekin Bahamas to see how many good records were released this year. But I've gone with uh, TTNG, This Town Needs Guns, and they released Disappointment Island. Uh, this year. I've been a big fan of This Town Needs Guns for the longest time, so that's particularly why I chose this record. I don't I don't really favour this record as a favourite. My favourite is Animals, but uh, this seems a very mature album, and I get a very f overwhelming feeling of melancholy and melancholy and, you know, longing for something when I listen to this record. It's very emotive, that's for sure. Especially the track, uh, Whatever, Whenever, that's uh, such a beautiful track. And the lyrics are just something else as well. Like, if you haven't, like, looked at what the lyrics are for that track, there's just some really good, like, clever wordplay and stuff, and lots of, you know, metaphoric meanings hidden in the lyrics. So, yeah, but I always find that kind of thing very good fun to dive into. And I feel like maybe Tim took you know, I'm just speculating, but maybe he took a different approach to this one instead of everything being very busy. You know, he knows when to be busy and when to lay back and let the song breathe. So that was quite pleasant to listen to as well. Uh, and my favorite track is Whatever, Whenever. And this also has a, another Milk Time session like Delta Sleep at the same place. And the audio quality is just spot on for that video. So go and check that one out. It's very moving. Okay, on to 2017. Uh, this is going to be uh, the, the record Trash Generator by the band Terra Melos. Um, I'm a very big Terra Mellis fan. Uh, when I was first getting into math rock, uh, at that time, it was just when Drugs to the Dear Youth had just been released, so I was listening to that quite a lot. And uh, my best friend introduced me to them, as, as far as I remember. And I really liked the untitled uh, record before that as well. And, you know, I learned, I learned Melody 1 and Melody 4, maybe, I can't remember. I did a cover of both of them a long time ago. Uh, so, yeah. And then uh, when I came to Korea, around that time, it was when uh, they got the new drummer. And just before I came to Korea, actually, I saw them play with Tangled Hair in uh, Birmingham near my hometown. 
and that that was a good show but the audio was very harsh because every wall in the place was concrete f for some reason for a music venue so it really hurt your ears but it's fun to see them and um, unfortunately we, we left uh, before the last track because our ears were just battered and then they played 40 rods as the last track so unfortunately I got to I missed that so that's a uh, I could go back in time when someone asks you what could you, what would you do I go back and just listen to that I guess that would be fun anyway I digress uh, so when this record came out uh, it's been it was quite a few years I believe uh, before the last one I didn't really listen much to um, X out before this uh, but this record yeah it's very good it's um, you know it's got the craziness and it's got the catchiness and it's got the poppiness and the wackiness and the, the, the you know what everyone associates with uh, Terra Melis is, is definitely on this record. It's very mature and like I can't understand some of the like the song like Warpless Run like man that that boggles my mind how to play that one so but yeah well, my introduction to this record was Trash Generator and I liked that song so much that I worked it all out and then I made a playthrough video of it and um, then I watched the audio tree session I did I think that was last year and that one's fantastic so go and check that one out and the song, um, the song Men's Shirt, uh, Men's Shirt became my favourite after that. So uh, go and check this record out. All right, almost at the end, uh, on to 2018, so last year. Um, if you watched my top 10, top 5 albums of 2018, you already know what this is. And again, it's Down to Sleep and it's the uh, album uh, Ghost City, which you've got up here somewhere. So yeah, I'm obviously a Down to Sleep fanboy, right? <laughs> They, they write such good music. So uh, after Twin Galaxies, yeah, I feel like this is um, more of a, a mature album, uh, definitely more refined. And I feel like, again, uh, like Maps and Atlases in a way, they went away with, you know, they ditched all of the, you know, the, the over the top tapping parts, you know, that really didn't add much to the song, you know, in favor of, you know, just what serves the song better, right? So I like, again, the whole thing of like, complexity you know we think complexity perhaps me equals like people are gonna like it more because it's got finger tapping at 10 million miles an hour uh, but rather we just like to hear a nice song right but the complexity is there when you concentrate it like on all of the the interchanging parts and how they interplay with each other is is really good so that's the a different kind of complexity right so the kind of good complexity and there are many standout tracks on this record i really do enjoy this one uh, you know after dark is a really good track but there's uh you know they made a few music videos for their songs you know the intro is very uplifting and just a really good introduction to the album favorite track if i had to choose one would be san sole and you know it's a very moving track very full of emotion and the music video portrays this very well so please go and check out the music video for that and lastly on to 2019 if you watched ali and i's top five uh, math art records of 2019 again you already know what this is this is the band holding patterns and the track, uh, the record is called Endless. Uh, well, it's technically not a new band uh, because the three of them were in a five piece called Crash of Rhinos and uh, they got their very own signature sound. You know, they had two bass players in that band, so it's got this really thick, meaty low end on that. So go and check out their uh, work if you haven't heard of Crash of Rhinos before. Um, it's reminiscent of Crash of Rhinos, but to me it sounds more streamlined and I like this more than Crash of Rhinos and you know, some people probably wouldn't agree with that, but uh, yeah, whatever. It's opinions, right? It's music. So, And it's hard to sum up how this album sounds because it's such a unique sound because it, it can sound really gritty and aggressive, but also sound very clean and very approachable at the same time if that makes sense each track feels like it was very thought out and everything was you know there's a lot of attention to detail like on you know different sounds and how you know guitars sound like what effects should we have on this it was clearly there and especially with the vocal work as well with all three of them inputting there and then you got these different timbre of voices and stuff so i love that kind of thing when it's done right which it certainly do is has been done here and my favorite track on this record is called Dust. So that's my list for the decade. Uh, it was quite fun to go back and actually look at my history, like I said, of what all the stuff I've been listening to. So I'd like to know what your top 10 list is. So please leave that down below. And I'm interested to see, you know, what I missed there. Um, you know, I'd like to hope you had a, a great decade and, you know, good luck and uh, fortune in the, the, uh, the, the decade to come. And um, I'd like to wish you all a happy new year 
and I want to say thank you very much for supporting this channel. You know, I've been going for three and a bit years now, and so you know, it's slowly growing, and I'm, and I'm really appreciative of everyone that's uh, been supporting this channel. So, anyway, enjoy your New Year's, and I will see you again next year, and hopefully, I'll have bigger and better content for you. So, until then, goodbye.